In this Outer Worlds video, we're going to be taking a look at the companions of the game. We're not going to be going into how to get these. If you guys need help with this, I've written this all down in the written version of this guide, but unfortunately I didn't record the video footage, so I didn't put it here. But if you need help finding them, we have all that in our written guide or on the wiki. This video is going to be about which companions to use, why they're good, why they're not good, and making decisions about how to optimize them. So the first thing I want to talk about with the companions, uh, of which there are six, is that there's effectively three archetypes and two companions of each archetype. So this means that they have roughly the same skills. Uh, two characters roughly have the same skills three times. These are Pravati and Felix. They share roughly the same skills. Sam and Max share the same skills, ironically. And Nyoka and Ali share roughly the same skills. So when making decisions about which ones of these to bring in your party, you're going to want to pay attention to this because you're probably not going to want to stack two that share the same skills, essentially, because they will be pretty much wasted in many cases, except maybe early on in the game. Now, it's important to know what the skills are of your companions, because if you didn't know and you skipped through character creation like I did and didn't figure it out until later, um, companions share a quarter of their total skill with your total skill value. So if they have 40 Persuade, you gain 10 Persuade to your total Persuade value. If they have 50 uh, Lockpicking, you gain 12 Lockpicking because it rounds down. Uh, to your total value. So you're going to want to pay attention to which companions give which because, you know, maybe you stack lie or persuade or intimidate over 100. And since skill checks in the game uh, for lie don't go over 100, then you're going to be wasting these. So you want to pay attention to these and you want to know that. And also one thing that's really important to note is that if you get inspiration in the leadership area of the skills up to 60, you'll actually double the value you get from these uh, to half their, half their value. So if you were going to get 10 persuade from 40 persuade of the character, now you would get 20 instead. And that applies to every skill that both companions give you. So it's very, very good to get your inspiration up to 60. To give you some idea, if you started the game with, let's say, 12 inspiration and you had to put 48 skill points uh, in order to get that up to 60, that would net you, and by end game, it would net you an extra 120 skill points so for that 48 invested, you're going to get 120 back. And that's not taking into account, you know, all the other passive benefits you get from investing into inspiration like companion damage and extra armor for them as well and the ability to use abilities. So that said, let's look at Pravati and Felix first because their skills are roughly the same. They have Persuade similar amount, Lockpick similar amount. The difference here is Engineering and Sneak. So if you want to play a stealthy character, the sneak value from Felix is going to add to yours, increasing your sneak damage. So that's good for you to have him. If you're not playing sneak uh, and you're never really uh, a stealthy character and you're not using sneak, then there's no real reason to have sneak on that character. And, and in that instance, Pravati would be much better for you. Now, of course, that doesn't take into account their personality and what their perks are and what their abilities are. So let's dive into those. Pravati's perks increase engineering by 10, which is not affected uh, by inspiration 60, by the way. It's only flat 10, no matter what you do. Um, it has, she gives you an increased chance to loot mods in the field, which is very negligible because you have tons of mods. And she restores 25% of your tactical time dilation meter when you use her ability, which is really, really good, actually. So if you're talking about perks, she has an okay one in plus 10 gen engineering. Engineering is not that great in terms of the skill checks in the game. There aren't many engineering ones. And you gain no passive benefit uh, from increased engineering, like you, you don't gain increased damage or stealth radius, or there's nothing like that you gain from it. So you're, and, and the passive amount she gives you from engineering doesn't increase uh, this, you know, the locked skills at 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100. It doesn't count towards that. So you're really not getting a lot of benefit except for dialogue skill checks. Now, her ability overload is actually really good. Uh, it does substantial damage. It stuns auto mechanicals and it knocks just about anything down. Out of all the abilities I tested on all of the characters, hers is either the first or second best. So when it comes to abilities, she has a very, very good one. Felix adds a flat 10 persuade to your value. Again, that's unmodified by anything. Uh, makes him deal more damage to cowering enemies, which almost never happens. And increases the party's damage against corporate military. That's a very specific type. You're going to be facing corporate military if you're doing a good playthrough. So if you're not doing a good playthrough, his perks lose a lot of value. Uh, but flat persuade is nice. Also, his ability, uh, the dropkick, is almost useless. It's so bad, it, it doesn't hardly do anything. It's low damage. It's very ineffective. 
So if you're talking about overall, which is a better companion, I think Pravati is overall the better companion unless you're playing a stealthy character. So if you plan on playing a stealthy character, you're going to want Felix unless you're playing alone and taking Lone Wolf. Um, but if you're not planning to utilize Sneak at all, then you're going to want Pravati. So next up, we have Sam and Max, which have nearly identical stats. Sam has a bit more Intimidate, which seems like, at first glance, he's the better pick because he basic, they basically have the same stats. He's got more Intimidate. No-brainer, right? Well, the difference here is that you cannot change Sam's equipment, so he's always going to have fixed gear, whereas you can slot uh, Vicar Max with armor uh, and a helmet that will allow you to increase his skills, uh, you know, theoretically hack and science if you're if you find like a plus tech skills uh, armor piece that will then translate to more of that for you so you may have less intimidate with vicar max but then you'll gain more hack and science so it's really up to you do you want a little bit more intimidate uh do you want a little bit more hack and science and of course again if that's just if you're making your decision based on skills alone taking a look at max's perks he increases your hack by a flat 10 again that can't be buffed uh, adds 20% duration to dialogue combat effects like Cower, Scramble, and Terrify, which is almost useless. And he increases science weapon damage for you and your party, which is very, very good if you are playing with a science weapon. The best weapon in the game happens to be a science weapon, so this is a very good companion if you're using that weapon or any of the science weapons. So if, if you are using a science weapon, this is a no-brainer. You're gonna take Max. His unique ability, Trick Shot, shoots an enemy with a shotgun, which knocks them down, weakens them, and makes them more susceptible to non-physical damage, which is excellent. Uh, it's one of the best abilities I've seen of all the ones I've tested. So he has pretty good perk if you're playing a very specific type of build, and he has a decent ability. Sam provides a passive increase to Intimidate. Uh, he reduces the amount of negative reputation you gain from killing people uh, inside factions, so... If you're somebody who wants to go on murder sprees and doesn't want to gain a whole bunch of negative reputation, uh, this is potentially very good for you. Or if you don't give a fuck, then who cares? Um, and it also increases his personal damage to auto mechanicals, which is nice. These are all fairly good perks. None of them are amazing. And when you look at his ability, uh, where he jumps in the air, knocks down a target, and sprays acid all of them, this is also very, very good. Um, and personally, just from witnessing the difference between Sam and Max in combat, Sam tends to do more damage, I've noticed. He seems to be more effective. His AI is better for whatever reason. So it's really going to boil down to how, you know, which personality do you like better and do you want a little bit more hack, you know, hack science over a little bit more intimidate. And I think that amount uh, in skills is really negligible. And so I think it's really just going to boil down to personality. So the last two companions, Nioka and Ellie, uh, have basically the same stats. They have the same conundrum that... Pravati and Felix have, which is they have sneak and engineering swapped. So they both don't share engineering or sneak. Instead, one has sneak and one has engineering. So again, much like the, you know, conversation I, or the thing I mentioned about Pravati and Felix, if you want to use a stealthy character, Nioka is more of the character you're going to want here to add that passive sneak damage to your attacks. And if you're not going to play a stealthy character, then Ellie is the obvious choice. Ellie's perks include medical, increased by flat 10, increased healing from your inhaler, which isn't terrible, and prevents you dying once every five minutes, which is pretty good. I mean, the game's not overly hard, but, you know, it's basically like, you know, if something's going to kill you, it doesn't kill you once in every five minutes, which isn't bad. Uh, her ability quick draw is not very, very good because it sets bleeding and disarms targets. Uh, auto mechanicals can't be disarmed or bleed, and many creatures can't be disarmed, so it's not a very, very good ability uh, in terms of, you know, what a character would have uh, out of all the companions. Nyoko gives you a flat increase to lie, which is useful, reduces the sound of your footsteps, which is also good if you're playing a sneaky character, and increases her own damage against creatures. And since creatures make up about 50% of the enemies in the Outer Worlds, that's a very, very good perk for her. Her ability, uh, Barrage, damages the target, reduces its armor, and sets it on fire. It's probably middle of the road in terms of companion abilities. It doesn't hit very hard. Burn doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but the reduced armor is nice. But usually you're killing things so quick, it's probably not super important. Personally, I think Ellie and Yoka are the weakest of the six companions in the game because medical really doesn't benefit much. Engineering is really only useful for skill checks. Um, and if you're not playing a sneak character, then uh, you know neither one of those companions is particularly good for you. So 
I don't recommend using either of these two, but if you want to pick one of them, I think I've made my case for why you would pick one or the other. A couple last things I want to note here is that you can get over 100 in certain skills um, if you bring, you know, companions that double stack uh, skills or you have your skills very high and you bring a companion that has uh, very high skills in that uh, particular one, uh, particularly if you have the 60 inspiration, which doubles it. Um, and you want to pay attention that you don't have over 100 in certain skills, like, for instance, lie or intimidate uh, or persuade, because there are no checks in the game that are higher than that number. So it's wasted after that point. Engineering is also wasted after 100. Um, and the passive benefit of engineering doesn't really do anything for you. So you want to really pay attention to making sure you're not going over 100 with things that don't give you passive benefit. Science and Sneak are both great to go over 100. Go over 100, pass them as much as you want, because you still gain passive benefit for each point put in them. So that's fine to go over on those. But you want to pay attention to ones you know, that aren't going to give you any benefit if they go over 100. Another thing to note here is that upgrading the weapons of your companion doesn't increase the ability damage they do. So you're not going to do more damage if you go you know, tinker their shotgun up higher or increase their hammer higher or whatever. The only real way to increase your companion damage is to level up and to get the Stonebreaker passive uh, on the Companion perk, that'll increase it by 30%. I highly recommend doing that if you're going to be playing with Companions, because like Pravati's and a couple other um, abilities can actually one-shot enemies if, if you have enough damage, and that's very, very useful. Another thing I want to stress here is how good getting to 60 Inspiration is if you're going to use Companions. It's essentially a 200 and something percent return on your investment in skill points, and that doesn't include the passive damage boost and armor boost that your Companions receive. So... I highly recommend getting that to 60 no matter what you do because you're going to get that back in skill points uh, across the board if you're using companions. If you're looking for good perks to use on companions, I recommend healthy to get increased health so they stay alive longer, fine aim or heavy handed depending on what weapon type character is using, and showtime which just generally increases the damage of your companion by 25% after you use one of their abilities which should be pretty regularly. Also, make sure to upgrade your companion's weapons and armor regularly to make sure that they are doing as much damage as they can and they are as protected as possible. Companions have a tendency to die particularly early on if you're not thinking about armor, and armor makes a really big difference in the game. Like, really big. Like, I, I highly recommend, you know, putting heavy armor on your companions uh, 9 out of 10 times because it will keep them alive, particularly if you keep it upgraded. The only ones I wouldn't do it on are Felix and Yoka because they have stealth. Uh, or sneak rather, and heavy armor tends to give you a penalty to stealth skills, uh, particularly if you are playing Felix and you have lock picking as well. You're going to get both of those stats penalized, and you don't want those to be penalized because then you get less benefit from their skills. Um, so in most cases, I, I'd suggest playing with heavy armor, but for Felix and Yoka, go with medium. Just make sure you upgrade it. Weapon choice isn't super important for your companions. They do have a tendency to lean one way or the other, based on their abilities. Some of them are melee abilities and some are ranged. You can kind of, you know, get the sense that if, if you use a melee ability on a companion, then they're going to be in melee range. Maybe they should use a melee weapon or at the very least a point blank type weapon. Um, but it doesn't really matter which weapons you slot. So you can try and tailor it to their character or you can just, you know, pick whatever you want. Stay tuned for more Outer Worlds coverage and be sure to check out our Getting Started Character Creation Best Weapon and Build Guides if you're looking for more content. Be sure to check out a review if you'd like to know our thoughts on the game.